A candlelight vigil held last evening at a park in Manhattan, remembering a college student fatally stabbed while walking there Wednesday night. A 13-year-old boy under arrest now in connection with her murder. Steve Rogers, a former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force and a retired Naval Intelligence officer, joins us now. A horrific story in which we continue to learn more details, Steve. Well, you know, the question is, how on earth does a 13-year-old wake up in the morning and decide that they're going to go rob and kill someone? And this wasn't just a, uh, an individual that went and stabbed someone once, but this was multiple times. And as a society, we really have to look at ourselves and find answers to that question. Because uh, it's not only happened here, it's happening around the country. The proliferation of violence on TV, on radio, video games, finally catching up to us. And we have to do something about this. We, meaning law enforcement, perhaps our clergy in each of the communities, have to get involved and parents in their homes. What are police doing now with regard to the suspects? Well, they're going to be uh, doing a lot of footwork. Uh, they're certainly going to speak to persons of interest and suspects, their friends. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm curious about, that this individual or any individual who may be involved with this post anything on social media uh, uh, a week ago, a month ago. You know, we find that a lot. People, uh, they see something, they never say anything. So they're going to be doing a lot of uh, interviews, a lot of uh, uh, discussion with family members, perhaps classmates. And uh, they're going to go down a road, and believe me, everyone responsible will be caught. How do you determine what the intent was of these young teenagers? Well, it's going to take a lot of work. Like I said, uh, there'll be a lot of discussions, uh, interviews. And look, this, this uh, suspects may have waked, woken up and said, look, we wanted to commit a robbery. It got out of hand. Robbery could have been the intent. Uh, was murder the intent? Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, is that... Uh, you know, they went there, they committed this crime, and they have to pay a penalty. Well, uh, it was introduced, this fact was introduced by the, um, the union president, the NYPD union president, uh, that she may have entered that park to buy marijuana. He introduced that and said that there seems to be a common denominator with these young teens that are accused of, uh, in her murder. The mayor of New York City has taken him on as heartless for making that comment, saying that is irrelevant with anything that we're looking at here. I've got to tell you, uh, I, I hope this individual regrets what he said because who's the victim? The woman, yeah. the person who was killed, her family. So it was a distraction. Uh, look, we don't know what he meant, uh, and certainly I'm not going to condemn him for what he well, said. Well, here's what the family says, okay? They put out a statement earlier today. The remarks by Sergeant's Benevolent Association President Ed Mullins we find deeply inappropriate as they intentionally or unintentionally direct blame onto Tess, a young woman, for her own murder. It continues. Our family is interested in knowing what exactly happened to Tess and who committed her murder. We believe for the immediate safety of the community and the the surrounding schools that should be everyone's top priority and we're grateful to the men and women of the NYPD for all of their efforts. Well, Sergeant Mullins is a pretty responsible individual. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that what he said was misinterpreted, but he'll have to come out and he'll have to take care of that and clarify. All right, that. we will see what more we learn on that as the investigation continues and now down to Austin, Texas, where there is a new story developing. Uh, it, it, there's a fiance who has now gone on camera multiple times crying over the disappearance of his partner and fiance, 33 years old, and I believe this was only weeks after they had a daughter together, a baby daughter, two weeks old. Uh, they vanished four days ago, and he is pleading for whoever is holding her to bring her home. Is he being considered as a suspect here? Oh, I'm sure he is, uh, at the very least, a person of interest. And how many times have we sat at this table on cases like this? And uh, the individuals that are doing the most crying are usually the individuals that committed these crimes. Now, I'm not saying he did. We have no evidence. But I could tell you that these investigations been, begin at the center of gravity, meaning right in the home and the individuals closest to the victims. So I'll bet your bottom dollar that we're going to find some information in the next few weeks that may, and this is my opinion, uh, based on uh, the common denominators that he may have been involved. We just don't know. And this is um, a video for us, obviously a picture that was taken after she dropped off her older child, a son, at school around 8 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, the last time that she was seen. So uh, there is a search out for her right now. And, and, and Sandra, I think he reported her missing four and a half or five hours later, I believe that's the timeline. That's troubling. Steve Rogers, thank you. We'll watch both of them carefully, as will you. Thank, thank you, Steve. You. So in a moment here, the White